Chris Windham has a new ride for 2023, and we'll get into that, plus updates on Ashton Torgerson, racing down under, and a question for you to ponder about dirt and NASCAR. Let's go. It's Tuesday, February 21st. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. I've been asked quite a few times in recent weeks what's up with Chris Windham as we didn't see him down south in Florida with the All-Stars to start 2023. We've known a deal was in the works for a while for Windham to move to a new situation. We finally got confirmation yesterday of what that is. The 2022 All-Star Rookie of the Year is moving from Hayward Motorsports to Lane Racing, and he is bringing the NOS sponsorship with him. Uh, he is going to run the All-Stars again this season with scattered other races on his schedule. Wyndham, like Tyler Courtney, decided to make the jump from regular non-wing competition to full-time winged competition, uh, and 2022 was his first time on the road as a full-timer. On top of Rookie of the Year, Wyndham finished seventh in final All-Star standings, picking up four top fives and 15 top tens in 52 appearances last season. As for Lane Racing, they were looking for a regular driver after parting ways with Cap Henry late in 2022. They ended up fourth in the final All-Star standings, including grabbing two victories. Both of those happened at Sharon Speedway, once in the spring and one in the fall. As for how this deal came together, there aren't a lot of public details here. We know Hayward continues to operate as a team as they brought a pair of cars to the Chili Bowl, and Wyndham did thank them in the Lane press release for his time in their cars. Towards the end of 2022, all signs were pointing to a return to the All-Stars for Wyndham and Hayward, uh, but somewhere along the way, this thing went sideways. If we're comparing Henry and Wyndham uh, right now in this situation, at least in terms of winged competition, Henry is the safer choice here, definitely a known quantity, uh, and he was significantly better than Wyndham in 2022. But I think the ceiling is probably higher here for Wyndham. Uh, last year was his first as a, you know, kind of a full-time winged driver, and we did see pretty dramatic improvement through the course of the year. Wyndham also brings funding with that NOS deal, so that always uh, always helps these situations as well. Looking at some stats, it took Wyndham 12 races to earn his first top 10 a year ago. It was a ninth at Waynesfield on May 15th. But from there, he earned 14 more top 10s and 40 starts. That's a percentage gain from 8% over those first 12 races to 35%. We know Cap goes well on Ohio tracks, but the All-Stars footprint has expanded quite a bit, uh, especially in recent years, and those other areas have been a problem, including in central Pennsylvania. In 15 races in that part of the country a year ago, Cap had only two top 10s, one at Bedford and one at Bloomsburg. That means zero top 10s at places like Lincoln, Port Royal, and Williams Grove. This new pairing of Wyndham and Lanes me uh, means some consolidation for the All-Stars. Obviously, you're taking two teams and making it one. Uh, but uh, the all-star field, I think, will still be pretty stout. And if we're going to make a few assumptions here about who's in and who's out, right now I can say that we can include in that group Tyler Courtney, Justin Peck, Hunter Schoenberg, Zeb Wise, Parker Price Miller, Scotty Thiel, and now Wyndham. And there's uh, still a few question marks, I think, around what Courtney and Peck could actually do. Uh, there were a ton of signs of Courtney going full-time outlaw racing, but it sounds lately like maybe all-stars, uh, you know, back for a third season is more likely. And Peck's situation, I think, is pretty fluid. We know that Tom Book wants to run like 100 races. We know that they th they've talked about some of the high limit stuff. So we'll see what has, you know, happens with them as the season plays out. But I wouldn't be surprised, too, to see a few other all-star additions before Attica in April. If you want to check out stats for Chris Windham, Cap Henry, thousands of other dirt racing drivers, check out the analytics section at dirttracker.com. A lot of info is available for free in there. and You can go a big step deeper with a subscription to Dirt Tracker Plus, $4.99 a month, $49.99 a year. Uh, basically, if you buy a year, you get two months free. Uh, that allows you to get even more stats and analysis you won't find anywhere else. Uh, anywhere else. Perfect if you cover the sport as a media person, if you play fantasy racing, or if you're just a numbers guy like I am. Check it out by clicking the link below in the video description or hit the plus button in the nav bar at dirttracker.com. And if you want even more content, make sure you check out dirttracker.com and follow Dirt Tracker on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Always new stuff being posted over there as well, and a lot of stuff that works well kind of with the content I do here on YouTube. One other sprint card team note for you uh, from recent days involved Team G uh, DGRD Racing. They will run Knoxville Weekly in the 410 division with Brandon Wimmer, along with scattered other 410 starts. They'll also field 360s weekly at Knoxville for Kelby Watt and Alex Vandevoort. That bit of news came courtesy of Jacob Horde and OhioDirt.com. All right, yesterday in my show comments, Mel asked about the status of Ashton Torgerson, who, if you might remember, was involved in that insanely scary crash at the Chili Bowl where he flipped and actually came out of the car. 
Ashton continues to recover and heal from his injuries from that crash, and his family is continuing to work with doctors on getting him cleared for a return to racing. Uh, at last update, the last I knew, he's still not quite there yet, but uh, should hopefully be soon. We did see him in a victory lane recently, though, as his brother Austin picked up a non-wing micro win at Adobe Mountain Speedway. As for the cause of the incident and him coming out of the car, there are plenty of theories around from internet detectives, uh, but the family put out some thoughts back on January 26th, and then that included some photos. It's their belief that the Velcro cover for the latch wasn't on properly, exposing the latch itself. Ashton was not wearing armor straights, but they said they believe that the restraint loops on his fire suit caught the latch and it released it as he began to flip. They confirmed the belts did not fail and they are certified until 2024 and they said he was probably latched in before the incident. You can see that full post with the photos that they uh, shared over on the Torgerson Racing Facebook page. And for our friends down under, our focus here in the States for dirt racing uh, has kind of turned to our own tracks, especially here over the last couple of weeks and, and last month really. But the season down there continues to roll along. In recent weeks, we've seen the young guys, uh, the young sprint car guys continue to shine. Back on February 11th, it was Jock Goodyear who took down the 60th Australian Sprint Car Championship at Perth. He put on a strong performance. He topped Lachlan McHugh, Callum Williamson, Jamie Veal, and Kerry Matson in that one. And just this past weekend, we had the Cricky Boy shootout at Perth. That included a little Madsen on Madsen and crime. Uh, Ian got into carry late and that one sent him spinning as both were running in the top five. Uh, not a great uh, look there for both the Madsen brothers. Out front, Lachlan McHugh took the victory, holding off Jamie Veal late with Jock Goodyear also on the podium. We'll see Lachlan McHugh in the U.S. later this year as he's going to run 50 or so races with Brandon Eikenberry's Deuce 5 Motorsports. That was the car that J.J. Hickel was in a year ago. And I hope we get to see Goodyear over here soon. He continues to rack up big wins down there and is definitely a star on the rise. Uh, you can keep up with what's happening down under by checking out Clay Preview uh, and my guy Toby Balboan over on the Sprint Car Hub YouTube channel. Before we close it down for today, I've got a question for you to ponder on this Tuesday. Over the weekend, we saw Ricky Stenhouse Jr. win his first ever Daytona 500. And Stenhouse is a guy with deep ties in the dirt racing world. He came up as a dirt racer. He competes pretty regularly in open wheel competition. We've seen him in midgets and sprint cars. And he's part owner of Sheldon Hodden Shields World of Outlaws team. And as we look down through the field, especially like a lot of guys in the top 10, top 15, more and more NASCAR competitors have dirt racing ties. We talk about Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, Alex Bowman, and the things he's done lately. Ryan, you know, Ryan Blaney's not a dirt racer, but comes from a dirt racing family. Kyle Busch has ventured into dirt racing. We've seen, seen uh, Justin Haley win Gators here this you know last couple of weeks at Volusia. Austin and Ty Dillon came up on dirt racing. Tyler Reddick, Chase Briscoe, even Chase Elliott uh, has appeared sometimes uh, in, in late models and midgets. As a dirt racing fan, do these connections draw you into the paved world more? Are you more interested in keeping up with NASCAR because there are so many guys crossing back and forth? Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments below. Looking at the streaming schedule for today, again, just Flow Racing 24-7 and Dirt Vision now airing all day. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Hope you guys have a good Tuesday out there. We'll be right back here tomorrow.